Hey guys, so we're going to talk about experimental design today. Um, it is an event, basically, where you do an experiment and then write a report, and it requires a lot of quick thinking. So let's get started. Um, the event is basically made up of two main parts, um, and then it'll be split up into two sections of um, 20 minutes and 30 minutes, um, and then there will be a second packet sent out uh, once part two is starting to be timed. So for the first part, um, it lasts for 20 minutes, um, and then it's when you do your experiment, while the second part is where you do more of the analysis stuff, and then you just gotta keep writing on and on and on and on. So um, yeah, let's go through some general strategies first before we dive down into anything specific. So first of all, I want you to split up all your work. You will have three partners for um, this event, so make sure that you're taking advantage of everybody's strengths. Um, and second of all, it really doesn't matter if you're right or wrong in real life, as in um, you don't have to use an exact scientific rule to explain as long as you can back yourself up um, with your data and whatever um, your experiment is showing you in your report. So, And then the third of all, just so that you don't get extra points off, um, make sure that you're organized and you're writing neatly. Uh, make sure that all the letters are legible, all the tables are um, uh, drawn with neat lines with rulers. Always bring a timepiece and a ruler. Um, and always for, uh, don't forget to bring a calculator. So, um, But you have to know that it is kind of a thing that they're going to take off points, just random points that are not going to be exactly rational. So, yep. And then a little more specifically, uh, we want to minimize your time um, spent on doing the experiment. And then you need to focus your main attention on report writing. So as long as you can catch the trend by doing, let's say, one set of experiment, don't waste your time on repeating trials two and three. Um, instead, of just take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, and then see if you can, you know, make up some data uh, that is within a reasonable range. So, and then make sure that you're using the back of the title page or other scrap paper for ref draft for a data table so that you can be more organized when you are rewriting the whole thing onto the actual um, section where it'll be scored and then yeah so and then for your uh, general experiment uh, conducting I guess uh, you can split up the work by having two people do the experiment while the other person record data for the data table so yeah okay so now let's dive into the specific um, sections of the graded rubric so make sure that you're taking a look at the rules because in the rules PDF, um, the rubric for scoring is on there exactly as it is. This is what they're going to be using for um, every single meet. And then, so it'll be great if you can, you know, work around with that. So let's start with A, statement of problem. It says here that statement addresses the experiment, including variables not a yes or no question. So here's a little template for you guys to follow. It's very straightforward. How does blah affect blah? So the first one is your independent variable, as in what are you going to change? What is your x value? And how does changing or manipulating that value affect the outcome of something else? Say, how does um, the time that you allow some water to be heated affect its final temperature or something like that? So time would be your independent variable, and then um, the final temperature would be your dependent variable or your y. So easy points to get, make sure that you are not losing all of them. And then second of all is your hypothesis. This is basically kind of your guess of the outcome. If you've written chemistry reports before, you know what a hypothesis is. Um, here's another pet template for you to follow, um, just to make sure that things are very organized. Um, and things like that. So as your x increases or decreases, your y increases or decreases. It doesn't have to be accurate, I don't think, but uh, you need to show your reasoning behind your guess um, and your trend. So this might be because or based on our previous knowledge, um, this thing happens, so that thing happens, and then that leads to our final hypothesis of, you know, 
stating that this will be the general trend for things. Okay. And then third is variables. I will spend a little more time on this one. So variables are split into like, I think two sections, independent and dependent variables, the things that are gonna change and then constants and um, some controlled variables. So your X is your independent variable. They call it IV over here. So here's what you need to do. You need to find what you're changing and then state them and then also give out the levels of IV. So for example, if you're testing solubility of sugar in water, you're gonna give out um, your zero value or your control, as in not putting in any sugar at all. And then your first value, say let's say five grams of sugar, and then 10 grams of sugar, level two, and then level three, 15 grams of sugar or something like that. So the amount of sugar is what you're actually changing and that's gonna be your independent variable. Um, and then also your Y would be your dependent variable, also DV, so what is going to change with it, say like the tasteness, the t uh, sweetness of taste in sugar, although that cannot be measured. But make sure that you uh, set your Y to something to be measurable or something that you can graph out instead of saying, oh yeah, this just increases generally, something like that. Yep, and then as a side note, always remember your units wherever you go. Um, never hurts to put down units, so yeah, just little things that we need to minimize the uh, the number of reasons that they can use to take off unnecessary points. There's that. And then moving on to controlled variables and constants. So here's um, something new, actually, they added on this year. They used to just be controlled variables or constants. Um, but here's the difference between the two uh, terms, I guess. Controlled variables is something that you can change, but you are not changing. So for example, if you're testing pressure um, and you want to keep the volume constant, so you, you can change the volume. Let's say if you're using a balloon by blowing more air into it and increasing it, but you're choosing not to. So that's kind of a controlled variable, while a constant is like air pressure in the room. Like you cannot change it, um, but it also always remains the same. So you're gonna state that. So it is asking in the rubric for two of each, two controlled variables and two constants. However, um, just in case one of them, let's say you stated was inaccurate, we want you to state three for each, um, each kind, just to make sure that, you know, we can get more points. Not that you'll get extra credit for stating a third, but um, if one of them is wrong, you still have the other two to get full credit for that. Um, but also, if it's not asking you for a reasoning, do not state a reasoning. So uh, controlled variables and constants should be very quick. Just state them, list them all, and move on. Make a little table, as um, you can see in, in the slide. Yeah, don't spend too much time on it. And then experimental control slash the standard of comparison is kind of something that you do to show, oh, uh, to make more sense out of your experimental data. So this is what you say when, it, when you don't change anything at all. Say the zero, if you are testing solubility of sugar in water, um, your control would be not putting in any sugar at all. That would be a good, um, a common, let's say, uh, control. Yeah, so it is your zero value or your starting point. Um, as it says, the standard of a comparison, what are you comparing your results to to make more sense out of it? Um, yeah, so here's another little template for you to follow just so you can make things more organized and straightforward. Um, never trick uh, or try to impress your kind of scoring teacher by saying, stating something really confusing. They don't spend too much time reading these, so just make it as straightforward as possible while stating um, being as thorough as possible. So experimental control is when you set something to zero or when you use a certain amount of something, uh, when there is no blah, and then you state your reasoning, this is what you should get if you don't touch it at all, and this is because, so why <clears throat> is does this look like this when you are not doing anything at all to it? 
and thus this is why you are choosing this um, little whatever you are choosing as your standard of comparison so that and then materials so materials should also be a quick thing um, to, so they're gonna give you like a bunch of stuff and then on the table but you don't have to use all of them only list the ones that you used including the materials you brought yourself so timepiece ruler etc make a list out of it um, so and then it also tells you to be uh, to quantify all your materials so if you're using 10 washers in total say 10 washers instead of just washers things like that um, no extra materials listed so just make sure that you are exactly on point um, and then move on yeah so that'll be um, everything from part for part one so parts a through e um, of your report these should all be done within the first 20 minutes do not spend too much time as I said on the experiment just spend around like what five minutes doing it get the trend move on start writing um, and yeah so in the next video you'll we'll talk about the middle portion so basically data graphs statistics stuff like that um, some of them require extra attention during the first 20 minutes so be a quick writer be organized and um, yeah if you have any questions let me know uh, we'll talk about